The U.S.-Japan alliance and the role of the U.S. Marines on Okinawa in extended deterrence. Paul O'Shea, Social Science Japan Journal, Volume 27, Issue 1, Winter 2024, published the 20th of February, 2024. Abstract. The relocation of the controversial marine base at Futenma on Okinawa to Hinoko in the north of the same island has been framed by Japanese politicians, officials, and analysts as crucial to deterrence. Critics respond that deterrence is merely a pretext, and the relocation is a politically convenient solution that perpetuates discrimination against Okinawa by the central government in Tokyo. This article draws on deterrence theory to evaluate the deterrence claims made by relocation proponents. It finds little evidence to support them. The Marines' capabilities pale against the massive U.S. forward deployment, including the 7th Fleet and the 5th Air Force. As for the local balance of forces, the Marines are unlikely to participate immediately in a local conflict, and their geographical location leaves them vulnerable. Current U.S. strategy is to downscale and disperse Marine units. If one were focusing on defense rather than political convenience, the Marines would be relocated off Okinawa. In terms of credibility, the article finds that other U.S. bases in Japan play a much more important tripwire role, and ultimately, given inter alia the security treaty, joint exercises, and deep interoperability, U.S. extended deterrence to Japan is as credible as possible under the circumstances. Deterrence, extended deterrence, U.S.-Japan alliance, Okinawa, military bases, Futenma, Hinoko, East China Sea. 1. Introduction. On the main island of Okinawa Prefecture, over 1,500 kilometers southwest of Tokyo and surrounded by the sprawling city of Jinan, lies U.S. Marine Corps Air Station MCAS, Futenma. In 1996, the U.S. and Japan agreed that Futenma would be returned in five to seven years and proposed the construction of a new facility at Hinoko approximately 45 kilometers to the north. The construction of the V-shaped runway, which involved land reclamation over a coral reef in the bay, only began in 2015. The majority of Okinawans opposed the move from the outset, calling for a Kenge or outside the prefectural solution, Corato 2015, 84. The story of the intervening years is one of military incidents and accidents, mass protests, broken political promises, and legal suit after legal suit. Opposition to the base relocation is overwhelming, and public opinion remains steadfast in its desire to have the base moved off Okinawa. A 2019 prefectural referendum saw 72% of voters reject the relocation. As the issue has heated up, the Liberal Democratic Party LDP, once the most powerful political force on Okinawa, has lost the governorship and seats in both houses of the Diet. While the issue has attracted the attention of U.S. and international media, despite this, successive Japanese administrations remain firmly committed to the Hinoko plan, with U.S. support. Former Prime Minister Abe Shinzo reiterated the shared Japan-U.S. stance that there is only one alternative, Hinoko, quoted in Yomiri Shimbun 2016. Both former Prime Minister Suga Yoshihide and current Prime Minister Kishida Fumio repeated this language shortly after taking power, describing Hinoko as the only solution. Amri 2021, the White House 2021, the rationale, advanced not only by successive governments but by Japanese analysts, journalists, and officials, is that the Marines' presence on Okinawa, whether at Futen or Hinoko, is crucial to deterrence and that moving the base off the island would undermine Japan's national security. For Japanese examples, see Kawakami and Takara 2015, Kotani 2015, Shireishi 2015, Hashimoto 2016, CTZ 2015 for interviews with, among others, former Defense Minister Morimoto Satoshi and Abe advisor Tanaguchi Tomohiko. The National Defense White Paper sums up the rationale clearly and concisely. The fact that the U.S. Marine Corps and other U.S. forces, which have high mobility and responsiveness and can handle a wide range of missions, are stationed in Okinawa, which has these geographical characteristics, further confirms the effectiveness of the Japan-U.S. alliance. It enhances deterrence and contributes not only to Japan's security, but also to peace and stability in the Indo-Pacific region.
Ministry of Defense 2021. The U.S. Marine Corps Twitter account repeated the exact same language when it stated that the Marines' presence on Okinawa strengthens deterrence and contributes greatly to the peace and stability of Japan and the Indo-Pacific region. Third Marine Expeditionary Force 2021. Thus, according to this line of argument, Okinawans must accept the base to preserve deterrence and the security of all of Japan. The role that the Marines are supposed to play in deterrence is rarely explained in any detail, though it can be discerned from policy documents, official statements, and media articles, for example Kawakami and Kiraoshi 2015, Kotani 2015, for more examples see Oshie 2019A. One of the key arguments is Okinawa's strategic location in the East China Sea, ECS, close to the disputed Senkaku stroke Daiwei Islands and also Taiwan. Another is that to move the base elsewhere would undermine the alliance and demonstrate weakness to China. Others are more general, including the tripwire effect or the Marines' role in a potential conflict on the Korean Peninsula. Critics argue that deterrence is at best a convenient distraction, and at worst a myth or pretext. Norimatsu 2011, Yanagisawa et al. 2017, McCormick and Norimatsu 2018, Mason 2019. According to this argument, the relocation to Hinoko has less to do with any deterrent effect the Marines might have, but rather is the most convenient political solution to a complex problem. Critics note that the sites at Futenma and Hinoko provide easy access to the large military training areas on Okinawa, while deployment in Japan means host nations' support, which keeps U.S. costs down. The U.S., under both Democrat and Republican leadership, has made it clear, on innumerable occasions, that it will not countenance a reopening of the agreement, and the Hinoko move must go ahead as planned. This article fills a clear gap in the literature. To date, there has been no systematic analysis of the role of the U.S. Marines on Okinawa in deterrence analyzing a relatively small part of a broader forward deployment, and assessing its role within a broader deterrent strategy is fraught with risk, the deterrence whole being more than the sum of its parts. Still, the express rationale for the base relocation plan is that this single part makes a major contribution to deterrence, especially in terms of capabilities. This enables us to evaluate these claims, while remaining mindful that deterrence is a dynamic psychological process, rather than a static evaluation of military capabilities. Given restrictions on access and scope, the article does not assess Chinese, or North Korean, decision-makers' perceptions of deterrence. However, the focus on both credibility and capabilities enables a theoretically informed and empirically detailed analysis. The article finds that, in contrast to the official Japanese discourse, the Marines' role in deterrence is overstated at best, and relatively insignificant at worst. In terms of overall capabilities, the Marines are relatively insignificant compared to the U.S. 7th Fleet and the 5th Air Force. As for the local balance of forces and the ECS, the Marines are unlikely to play a direct role in a local conflict, at least in the early stages. Moreover, in the event of escalation their location on Okinawa leaves them highly vulnerable. If one were focusing on defense strategy rather than political convenience, the Marines would be relocated off Okinawa. As for credibility, the article finds that U.S. extended deterrence to Japan is as credible as possible, with a security treaty, massive joint exercises, interoperability, and a major forward deployment of troops. Against this, the presence or absence of the Marines should make little difference to the credibility of deterrence. However, the article acknowledges that there may be a self-fulfilling prophecy, the base, and the relocation to Hinoko, has been narrated as crucial to deterrence, and so it may become. The article concludes with a recommendation to preserve long-term deterrence and ease the burden on Okinawa. 2. The U.S. Military Presence on Okinawa The story of the U.S. military presence on Okinawa begins with Commodore Matthew C. Perry's journey to open Japan to U.S. trade in the mid-19th century. Perry also visited Okinawa, then the center of the Kingdom of the Ryukais, itself a vassal of the neighboring Satsuma domain since the invasion of 1609. He established the very first U.S. base on Okinawa, which he left behind as he continued his mission to Tokyo, then Edo. Perry also petitioned Washington for permission to take formal control of Okinawa on behalf of the U.S. 
a request that was denied due to the difficulty of maintaining a base at such a distance, as well as the embarrassment should it fall. After China ceded Formosa, Taiwan, to Japan following the first Sino-Japanese War in 1895, Okinawa's economic and geostrategic importance declined, and gradually the islands fell into backwater status, O'Shea 2019 b. The U.S. entry into the Pacific War revitalized Okinawa's strategic importance, turning the islands into stepping stones to the mainland and culminating in the devastating Battle of Okinawa. Estimates of the civilian dead vary, ranging from the tens of thousands to over 100,000, Kerr 2000. Thus, a century after Perry's abortive attempt to put a base on Okinawa, the United States finally did occupy the island, in advance of a planned invasion of Japan. Emperor Hirohito announced Japan's surrender before the invasion took place, sparing the civilian population of the mainland, but clearly differentiating the treatment of mainland Japan vis-à-vis Okinawa. A further differentiation would come in April, 1952. While the U.S. occupation of Japan formally ended, Okinawa remained under U.S. military rule. In 1972, the islands reverted to Japanese control, yet the U.S. military bases remained. While the rate of both serious accidents and crime declined over the decades, high-profile incidents fueled opposition to the bases, especially Futenma, the status of forces agreement which gave the U.S. military jurisdiction over crimes committed on Okinawa by U.S. troops, was particularly controversial. Yamamoto 2019. In 1995, two Marines and a sailor kidnapped and raped a schoolgirl. The public outrage led to massive protests, depicted as another sacrifice by Okinawa for the mainland Angs 2001, Mikanaji 2004. It also gave impetus to negotiations on the U.S. presence on the island, culminating in the 2006 roadmap for military realignment, which would move Futenma to Hinoko and see other Marines moved off Okinawa to Guam. Okinawa and public opinion on the other U.S. bases on Okinawa is complex, with many residents benefiting from their presence Williams 2013, his I.A. and Pure 2023. However, the Hinoko relocation plan remains deeply unpopular Kuato 2015, 84. This in part explains why, even after the relocation plan was announced, three LDP prime ministers, 2006 to 2009, including Abe in his first term, delayed its implementation. In 2009, the first EPJ prime minister, Hatoyama Yukio, sought to renegotiate it, pushing for a Kenge solution as part of a foreign policy that sought a more equal alliance with the United States, O'Shea 2014. The U.S. refused to countenance a change in plan and Hatoyama failed to find an alternative, eventually reverting to the original plan and resigning after only eight months. Two more short-lived DPJ prime ministers followed, but it was not until Abe's second term as prime minister that Tokyo began to implement the move. In 2015, almost a decade after the initial announcement, construction began in earnest in the face of overwhelming local opposition, as noted. Both Sugar and Kishida reaffirmed Hinoko as the only solution. Amri 2021, the White House 2021. 3. Extended Deterrence and the U.S.-Japan Alliance. This section outlines the basics of deterrence, focusing on those elements most relevant to an analysis of the role of the Marines on Okinawa in deterrence, including central and extended deterrence, the role of capabilities, the local balance of forces, credibility, and communication. The literature on deterrence is vast, much of it originating in the Cold War and the logic of nuclear deterrence. Snyder 1961, Schelling 1966, Jervis 1984. This article draws primarily on comprehensive studies of contemporary deterrence published by Mazaret Al, 2018, and Anderson et al., 2013. These are up-to-date and authoritative studies with extensive literature reviews and in-depth, theoretically informed case study analyses of U.S. extended deterrence today. Both reports were commissioned by the U.S. military and are written and published by analysts and institutions, which are part of the U.S. security establishment, the former by RAND, the latter by the U.S. Air Force Institute for National Security Studies and as such represent the state-of-the-art thinking on deterrence in security studies. At its most simple, 
Deterrence is a psychological concept in which A persuades B, through implicit or explicit threats, verbal or physical, not to act against A's interests. A's interests may involve more than the protection of A itself, which leads us to the division between central and extended deterrence. Central deterrence refers to deterring an attack on the state's home territory, while extended deterrence refers to the state extending deterrence to include third-party states Anderson et al. 2013, 45, Maser et al. 2018, 89, the United States deters attacks on the continental United States, as well as more remote U.S. territories such as Guam, see figure 1, through central deterrence. Its security treaty commitments to Japan and South Korea are a form of extended deterrence. The extension of U.S. deterrence is the foundation of Japan's security strategy, though Japan increasingly engages in its own central deterrence. Figure 1 Okinawa, Guam and Japan. Open in new tab download slide. Beyond central and extended, deterrence can be categorized as denial or punishment. Anderson et al. 2013. 3. Maseret al. 2018. 7 8. The threat of massive nuclear retaliation was the basis of Cold War deterrence. Simply put, both the US and USSR were restrained from using nuclear weapons against each other by the threat of the unacceptable cost of nuclear annihilation. While this mutually assured destruction remained salient throughout the Cold War, it soon became apparent that it did not deter actions on a smaller scale. For example, the US was not able to deter the erection of the Berlin Wall, nor could either China or the USSR deter the US from attacking North Vietnam. This leads to denial, that is, the threat that A would simply prevent B from accomplishing the goals of a given action, and therefore B should not take the action in the first place. 3.1. Capabilities and extended deterrence. Whether denial or punishment, central or extended, effective deterrence requires a, that A has sufficient military capabilities to enforce the threat and b. Credibility, that is, the opponent believes that A will follow up on the threat. Finally, deterrence requires communication, both in terms of effective signaling of what actions B should not embark upon, and which consequences are threatened should B follow through. In terms of capabilities, those required for punishment differ from those for denial. Deterrence by denial in some ways mirrors defense, Deterrence and defense are analytically distinct but thoroughly interrelated in practice. Morgan 1983, 32, cited in Maseret al. 2018, 7. The key difference is that while the capabilities involved overlap, defense takes place when deterrence has failed. Deterrence concerns deterring an aggressor from initiating an action, defense, preventing that actor from accomplishing its goals after the action has been initiated. In terms of capabilities, a favorable local balance of forces, the combination of capabilities, resources, and alliances present in a specific area, dramatically improves deterrence. Maseret al. 2018, 53. However, the local balance of forces is not determinative, and there are cases of aggression where the local, and indeed general balance of forces was not in the aggressor's favor. Maseret al. 2018, 53. Conversely, an unfavorable balance of forces is often sufficient to deter, provided that the deployed forces are sufficient to raise the cost of a potential attack, to create the inevitability of escalation, and to deny the possibility of a low risk fate accompli. Maseret al. 2018, 26. This is where we see a clear difference between defense and deterrence. In terms of extended deterrence, even where the local balance of forces is overwhelmingly in favor of the aggressor, the tripwire effect, and the role it plays in credibility and communication, can be sufficient to deter any actions. Anderson et al. 2013, 26, forward deployed bases are classic tripwires, triggering an automatic response and thus ensuring the credibility and assurance of extended deterrence. The role of tripwires is further elaborated later in the article. 3.2. Credibility in extended deterrence. Credibility varies dramatically between extended and central deterrence, especially at, but not limited to, the level of massive retaliation. Making central deterrence credible is easier. There is little doubt that the U.S. will respond to attacks on its own territory, as evinced by Pearl Harbor and 9-11. However, extended deterrence has credibility problems. 
France's decision to withdraw from NATO and develop its own nuclear deterrent was in part based on the belief that the U.S. would never exchange New York for Hamburg or Paris, that is, in a crisis, U.S. decision. Makers would not actually risk the nuclear destruction of the U.S. for the sake of its allies Anderson et al. 2013, 42. In the Japanese context, this means that the U.S. must not only deter China, but also assure Japan. The case of the failure to assure France is instructive. If U.S. assurance were unsuccessful in the Japanese case, policymakers in Tokyo may decide that acquiring nuclear weapons is the only viable way to ensure Japan's security, fueling a regional security dilemma. Indeed, the failure of U.S. assurance led to both Taiwan and South Korea attempting their own nuclear programs during the Cold War, Roy 2003, Rorig 2017. Unsurprisingly, many of the means of deterrence and assurance overlap. Communicating credible deterrence to China will also have the effect of assuring Japan. Conversely, while the likelihood of either a nuclear or conventional attack on Japan remains low, the fact is that the most likely targets would be U.S. bases including Futenma, for example, Richard C. Bush, senior Brookings analyst and former U.S. high-ranking official, notes that North Korea threatening to use nuclear weapons against U.S. bases on Okinawa and the Japanese home islands or actually using them in the context of a conventional war on the peninsula, is more plausible, if still unlikely, Bush 2011, 16, italics in original point one. Similarly, the Pentagon's 2019 China Power Report describes how China deploys both ballistic and cruise missiles placing targets on Okinawa and the main Japanese islands at risk, U.S. Defense Department 2019, 62. In fact, a recent U.S. study of Chinese military writing on air power in the region notes that the main focus of air base strike operations would likely be runways, with Kadena Air Base on Okinawa a priority target in a conflict with the United States or Japan, Mastro in Eastern 2017. 4-5. Another U.S. analyst describes U.S. bases in Japan as sitting ducks, Greer 2019. We will return to the fate of these bases in a potential conflict. For the moment it suffices to say that, at least as far as Okinawa is concerned, one could argue that the Marines play as much a magnet role as a deterrent one. Finally, given the unpredictability of US North Korea policy and the influence of preemptive strike boosters in Washington, a further argument could be made that the US needs to be deterred just as much as North Korea does. Conventional extended deterrence, like its nuclear cousin, suffers from credibility problems. History has shown that states repeatedly misjudge the likely response of distant allies, as in the case of the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait or the Korean War. Masaret al. 2018, 22, op-eds and feature articles in both Japanese and American newspapers and magazines openly question the likelihood of U.S. soldiers dying for uninhabited rocks in the East China Sea. Christoph 2010, Sato 2013, Srasik 2014, Yamada 2014, Bandao 2017. Schelling noted that an ill-defined or ambiguous commitment, one in which there are loopholes through which to exit, may make an opponent believe that this is precisely what the defending state will do. Schelling 1966. 48. Thus, Masaret al. finds that perhaps the dominant theme of the deterrence literature over the last three decades has been that the value of deterrent messages lies in the eye of the receiver. Masaret al. 2018, 11. Deterrence is not objective, nor does it exist in a vacuum. Rather, the meaning of an action or statement is determined by the target, making perceptions the key factor in effective deterrence. They argue that any strategy to prevent aggression must begin with an assessment of the interests, motives, and imperatives of a potential aggressor. 2018. 2. Furthermore, deterrence can fail for reasons beyond the control of the defender. For example, when an aggressor state faces domestic unrest, or a leader believes their position to be weakening, necessitating immediate action, or when the deterrent threat is misperceived as a build-up to war. Masaret Al. 2018, 3.3, Communication and Extended Deterrence. If the extended deterrence by a distant ally is difficult to make credible, 
At least the defending side has a broad spectrum of tools at their disposal. Political resolve can be demonstrated through, inter alia, public statements by leaders, national strategic guidance documents, such as the U.S. National Security Strategy, or the U.S.-Japan Guidelines for Defense Cooperation, declaratory policy on use of force, and of course, security treaties Anderson et al., 2013, 818. This is reinforced by political military support, in the form of visible engagement through military-to-military -military consultations, joint exercises, military hardware sales, and interoperability Anderson et al., 2013, 1823. Finally, overseas bases are considered a highly effective deterrent to potential adversaries of U.S. allies and partners Anderson et al., 2013, 23. We have already noted that bases are believed to act as tripwires, triggering an automatic response and thus ensuring the credibility and assurance of extended deterrence, as we shall see in the next section. Japan enjoys more or less as much credibility as extended deterrence can offer. 4. The role of the Marines in extended deterrence. This section draws on the mechanics outlined thus far to examine the role of the Marines in extended deterrence. It first examines their role in general deterrence, as part of the overall deployment of U.S. forces in Japan. Then it turns to China and its intentions, considering the assumption of China as an aggressor to be deterred, before focusing on the local balance of forces in the ECS, investigating the Marines' role in a potential conflict on or near the disputed Senkaku stroke Diaois. It ends with an analysis of the role of the relocation in communicating the credibility of the alliance and of the U.S. pledge to defend Japan. 4.1 the Marines and the deployment of U.S. forces in Japan. Approximately 19,000 U.S. Marines are based in Okinawa. Approximately 25% of these are to be transferred to Guam, host of the other major U.S. military bases in the Western Pacific. Kyoto News 2019, C. Figure 1. Futenma itself hosts Marine Aircraft Group 36 and Marine Air Control Group 18, providing transport and training for the 3rd Marine Expeditionary Force which is rotated through Okinawa and the rest of Asia. Although based at Futenma, as well as nearby Camp Schwab, the Marines actually spend much of the year abroad, training in Guam, South Korea, Thailand, and Australia. O'Hanlon and Mochizuki 2012, April 2019. The Marines in Okinawa, whether counted in terms of those physically present or those technically based but away on rotation, represent a small part of the U.S. military capabilities deployed in Japan, see Figure 2. The Navy's 7th Fleet is headquartered at Yokosuka, near Tokyo. The fleet includes a U.S. aircraft carrier strike group centered on the aircraft carrier USS Ronald Reagan, as well as missile cruisers and destroyers. The fleet also includes ships stationed at Sasebo, on the southern main island of Kyushu. Sasebo hosts an amphibious squadron, including a helicopter carrier and other assault and transport ships, whose mission is to support and transport U.S. Marines, the same U.S. Marines that are located on Okinawa. The U.S. Fifth Air Force is headquartered in Japan, at Yokota, Tokyo, with other bases at Misawa, Aomori, and Kadena, Okinawa. The Fifth Air Force comprises 15,000 personnel and includes the 18th Wing, the largest U.S. Air Force combat wing. The U.S. also operates a web of missile defense systems in the region, which defend Japan, South Korea, and U.S. overseas territories as well as the U.S. mainland. Figure 2. U.S. military bases in Japan. Open in new tab download slide. Simply put, without the Marines, the forward deployment of U.S. forces in Japan would still consist of an aircraft carrier, a helicopter carrier, fighter squadrons, missile cruisers, destroyers, and more. Put in the larger context, the Marines on Okinawa are a relatively minor factor. Indeed, as outlined later in the article, in many analyses of the regional security situation and balance of forces with regard to China and North Korea, analysts do not even mention the Marines. This is not to argue that the other deployments are determinative assets in a regional conflict, as outlined in detail below. Forward deployments in Japan, South Korea, and Guam are all extremely vulnerable and would likely be attacked in the initial phase of any conflict. However, the point here is that, in terms of overall capabilities, as well as the tripwire effect, the Marines are not crucial.
Moreover, in the early stages of any conflict with China, the Marines' role compared to the Navy, Air Force, and emerging technologies like cyber would be minor, as outlined later. Thus, the impact of relocation of Okinawa on general deterrence, seen in terms of overall capabilities, would also be minor. However, as stated in the previous section, effective deterrence is not simply a question of gross capabilities, the local balance of forces matters. Together with the U.S. Air Force Base at Kadena, also on Okinawa, the Marines are the most local forces, insofar as their location on Okinawa ensures proximity to the East China Sea. This location is hailed in the discourse on the Marines as being key to deterrence. Thus, we turn now to the role of the Marines in deterring a conflict between China and Japan in the East China Sea on or near the disputed Senkaku stroke IOS 4.2. Deterring China. We start here by interrogating the assumptions of China's intentions. As we have seen, understanding the potential aggressor is key to ensuring deterrence. The Marines are assumed to contribute to deterring China from aggression in the ECS, primarily from occupying the disputed ECS island Senkaku stroke Dias, but as noted sometimes with reference to Taiwan. China's use of force in territorial disputes has varied over time, until the 1980s, China was frequently engaged in armed conflict with its neighbors. This was followed by an era of relative peace, with the exception of the 1995-1996 Third Taiwan Straits Crisis. However, in recent years China has been involved in escalations in the East and South China Seas, and outright militarized conflict with India. Meanwhile, at home, the CCP has dramatically increased repression through the national security law in Hong Kong along with the arrest of democracy activists and further repression of the free press, combined with the mass detention and labor camps in Xinjiang, and the increased saber rattling directed at Taiwan, there is no doubt that China's new confidence has led to increased repression at home and aggression abroad. The recovery of Taiwan has re-emerged as both a key plank in China's foreign policy and the most serious flashpoint in the region, while 2049, the centenary of the founding of the People's Republic of China, was the commonly accepted deadline for a unification, Admiral Phil Davidson, former head of U.S. forces in the Pacific, told Congress that the threat of an attack was manifest during this decade, in fact in the next six years, thus inadvertently creating the eponymous Davidson window, cited in Hill 2021, N.P. The logic is that China's military modernization means that it has regional conventional superiority and effective nuclear parity, while the political benefits to the CCP, and especially to Xi himself, now outweigh the negative consequences. This has been hotly debated in a flurry of publications and commentary, for example Hill 2021, Holmes 2021, Mastro 2021. Japan's role in a Taiwan crisis is unclear. Abe raised eyebrows when he stated that the U.S. should abandon strategic ambiguity and that a Taiwan contingency is a Japan contingency. Quoted in Mori Ayasu 2022, Taiwan has other supporters in the LDP and its integrity is seen as key to Japan's own security. Wilkins 2022, while Japan's formal policy has not changed, and it has made no commitments to defending Taiwan. Lift 2021. Japan's defense white papers now directly address the issue and make explicit its defense plans. Minister of Defense 2023. Furthermore, as we shall see in the next section, a grim fate awaits both the Marine base and Okinawa more broadly in the event of a US China conflict, whether Japan joins the conflict or not. Research shows that historically China has been less likely to act aggressively in a dispute in which its position stroke bargaining power is improving. Fravel 2007, this chimes with the words of a Chinese official in 1996, during the first major flare-up in the dispute since the 1970s. The official told the Asia Times that China could afford to be patient, as it would catch up with Japan over the coming decades, and when that happens, Japan will review its position on the Diaboys and find that China has been right all along. Quoted in Downs and Saunders 1999, 146, the official was not wrong. Since the 1990s, China has steadily improved its position in the sovereignty game over the dispute. O'Shea 2012, 
This, together with its gradual military eclipse of Japan, as well as perceived U.S. decline both regional and global, indicates that China's bargaining position continues to improve. China's behavior over the past 20 years clearly shows that it has a patient, long-term strategy aimed at establishing dominance. However, there are circumstances in which China may seek to occupy or otherwise trigger conflict over the islands, for example, in the case of a severe domestic crisis. Furthermore, as Fravel himself points out, Japan establishing any significant military facilities would be viewed in China as a clear challenge. Fravel 2007, 82. Moreover, smaller clashes involving non-state or paramilitary actors could escalate into a wider conflict. Asen and Bolt 2014. Still, recent scholarship suggests that Japan and China have successfully engaged in crisis management, and thus we should be more optimistic about the potential for peace in the ECSU and Kim 2019. Indeed, Sino-Japanese relations have improved since the post-2016 change in US-China policy, though the underlying long-term economic competition remains. Puglisi and Incisa 2022, 4.3, The Marines in an East China Sea Conflict. At first glance, the role of the Marines at Futenma in deterring China can seem obvious. After all, the Marines are an expeditionary force, specializing in amphibious landings, and geographically very close to the disputed islands. In terms of the local balance of forces, they are the very definition of local. This runs to the core of the ostensible arguments in favor of keeping the base on Okinawa, since the Marines are a big deterrent and play an important role in the defense of Japan's southwestern islands, including the Senkakus. Hashimoto 2016, full stop. According to this logic, should China occupy the islands, the Marines would be quickly mobilized to land and remove the occupying force. However, the geographic location of the Futenma base does not provide deterrent value for several reasons, one of which we have already seen, they are not physically present for much of the year. Another obvious reason is that while the Marines are based on Okinawa, the amphibious squadron, the assault ships tasked with delivering the Marines to the battlefield, are located elsewhere. With the deep water military port at Inoko looking increasingly unlikely, the troop transporters will remain at Salsabo, in northern Kyushu, over 700 kilometers from Okinawa, while the rest are based in the continental United States. The controversial Osprey Tiltrata transport aircraft is part of the existing Futenma deployment, and presumably would move to Hinoko. Still, it is highly unlikely that either the Osprey or the assault ships would be deployed in a Senkaku Daioyu conflict, before the surrounding air and sea were secured. In sum, the immediate geographic location of the Marines is relatively meaningless, and hardly contributes towards deterrence. But even all this is moot, as it presumes that the Marines would engage early in a conflict over the Senkaku stroke Daioyus, as noted earlier, and to be elaborated presently. In any serious conflict with China or North Korea, the Okinawan air bases, including Futenma Hinoko, would be among the first targets. But even without assuming their destruction, or assuming a lower level of escalation, the Marines would likely not engage. There are two issues to address here. First, the extent to which the US would directly engage in the conflict, and second, assuming US engagement, the role the Marines would play. Since 2012, the U.S. has consistently stated that the islands fall under Article 5 of the Security Treaty. In other words, the U.S. pledges to defend them as it would the rest of Japan, Mana in 2016. However, this does not mean that the U.S. would necessarily immediately involve itself in a shooting war with China. In fact, even officials in Japan and the U.S. are unsure of what exactly would happen in the event of a Senkaku Daioyu conflict. Eggenbottom and Samuels, 2018, 136. Some scholars argue that the U.S. position on the islands is similar to its position on Taiwan, strategic ambiguity, Seng, 2015, Costa, 2017. Strategic ambiguity is a double deterrent, by not saying what it would do in the case of a conflict. It not only deters the potential aggressor, China, from acting, but also deters the potential defender. Taiwan, or Japan, from acting in a way that could trigger conflict, such as declaring independence, in Taiwan's case, or constructing a military outpost, 
In Japan's case, the Taiwan comparison does help shed light on the Senkaku Daiwa issue. However, there are fundamental differences, not least that the U.S. does openly commit to defend the Senkaku's Daiwa's. During the Obama administration, the issue was hotly debated. Sato 2013, Okumura 2014 A, 2014 B, Srasik 2014, Yamada 2014. Even Trump stated early in his presidency that the security treaty applies. Biden has reaffirmed this commitment, developing the custom that each new president makes a declaration on the issue. However, spilling the blood of American troops over uninhabited remote islands controlled by Japan contradicted Trump's America first foreign policy, and given his unpredictable foreign policy, frankly, nobody knows what would have actually happened. Furthermore, the very fact that Trump was elected, as well as the severe reputational damage caused by his four years in office, has left the U.S. with credibility issues. G in 2018, Midford 2018, Yahi Milo 2018, O'Shea and Maslow 2020. Biden has worked hard to reassure allies, but the fact remains that Trump's election was a watershed in U.S. politics and foreign policy. While Biden, for example, has seemingly abandoned strategic ambiguity, declaring that he would defend Taiwan, and bolstered U.S. credibility through its support of Ukraine, there is a distinct possibility that a post-Biden U.S. president could return to America first rhetoric and policies, calling into question U.S. commitments in Asia and the world. Simply put, there is no guarantee that future presidents will include the islands under Article 5, let alone send troops in case of conflict. We will return to the issue of credibility in the next section. On balance, given the reputational effects of letting down a key ally and failing to keep promises, the most reasonable assumption would be that in any Senkaku Daiwa conflict Japan leads, and the US provides logistical support and economic sanctions, while avoiding direct military conflict unless absolutely necessary Ohan in 2020. To this end, Japan has engaged in central deterrence, that is, building up capabilities that could be used in such a conflict. The reorientation of Japan's military from ground-based forces located in Hokkaido to naval and air forces located in the southwest of the archipelago has been ongoing since the 1990s and gained steam under A. Sakaki and Maslow 2020. Japan has initiated a military build-up on remote islands, constructing a southwestern wall of radar and missile bases and expanding ports to enable military use. As part of a dynamic defense posture, Harold et al. 2018, a key part of this wall is the Amphibious Rapid Deployment Brigade, ARDB. The ARDB is essentially a Japanese version of the Marines, trained by the U.S. Marines with a very specific purpose. Its primary mission is to conduct full-fledged amphibious operations for swift landing, recapturing, and securing in the case of illegal occupation of remote islands Minister of Defense Yamamoto Tomohiro, quoted in Harold et al., 2018, 12, according to a RAND report co-authored by a retired senior JGSDF general, the units are also to act specifically as a deterrent against an invasion of these remote islands Harold et al. 2018. So, to restate, the twin purposes of the ARDB are deterrence, and to reoccupy islands in southwest Japan. Since the geographic location of the U.S. Marines on Okinawa has long been touted as key to their deterrent value, one might reasonably expect that the ARDB would then also be stationed on or near Okinawa. This is not the case. The ARDB is based at Sasebo, the same aforementioned Sasebo that hosts the Marines' transport and assault ships. Indeed, according to the Japanese Ministry of Defense, JMOD itself, this northerly location is specifically a deterrent posture by units location from peacetime, sick. Harold et al. 2018, 12. Sasebo is located approximately 750 kilometers from Okinawa. At first glance, this is perplexing, since the Marines' location on Okinawa is said to be a big deterrent, and the key reason why they cannot be located anywhere else. Yet the JMOD has not made a catastrophic strategic blunder, rather, Keeping any reoccupying force far from the battlefield makes far more sense than stationing them on the nearest island. For further clarification, 
Let us turn to a recent authoritative and exhaustive examination of Japan's defense and deterrence options by two leading experts, Eric Hagenbottom and Richard Samuels, 2018, published in the foremost U.S. Journal of Security Studies, International Security. Their study, which goes into granular detail on hypothetical conflicts with China, including a discussion of the islands, barely references either the Marines or the ARDB. They do know that, in the event of a conflict triggered by a Chinese occupation of the Senkaku stroke Diaois, the entire southwestern archipelago together with its various bases, lies in comfortable range of the majority of China's crews and ballistic missiles. This chimes with the security literature mentioned earlier, which highlights the vulnerability of U.S. bases on Okinawa, labeling them as sitting ducks. Heggenbottom and Samuels go further, carefully and diplomatically criticizing the decision to set up the ARDB in the first place. Japan should reduce the emphasis on offensive forces, such as amphibious naval elements. 2018, 158 9. They note that the ground self defense forces, GSDF, to which the ARDB belongs, have a stranglehold on SDF budgets and organization which makes little sense given the primarily air and maritime nature of the Chinese threat. 2018, 163. They are also skeptical of the JSDF decision to purchase Ospreys, rather than pursuing a counter-attacking strategy. They suggest that Japan should focus on deterrence through active denial, presenting China with little prospect for a short, reasonably predictable victory. Eggenbottom and Samuels, 2018, 138. This would be accomplished through survivable, mobile forces with the ability to isolate and strike an encroaching adversary and with a heavy emphasis on precision strikes, Heggenbottom and Samuels, 2018, 166. Finally, when the U.S. reinforcements arrive and China's infantry of long-range missiles are exhausted, they see a role for counterattack capability that can recapture lost territory Heggenbottom and Samuels, 2018, 168. However, this should be maintained farther offshore to keep it secure from preemptive attack which they argue is not only efficacious for deterrence, but also diminishes first strike incentives, 2018, 168. From this, we can easily deduce that if the Marines' purpose was to deter an occupation of the Senkakus Diamois, or indeed to deter any kind of conflict with China, they would be relocated not to Hinoko but rather to the home islands or even further afield, beyond the range of China's missiles. Moreover, we can understand now why the ARDB is located not on Okinawa, but on Kyushu, and even there, the ARDB is of little deterrent value, at least according to the leading U.S. experts. A counter-argument could be that a frontline presence is necessary to prevent a power vacuum, and thus allow for a fait accompli, where China succeeds in changing the status quo before Japan has time to react. Indeed, as stated, China slowly but surely has successfully altered the status quo in the ECS over the past decades. O'Shea 2012, Takahashi Sujio, a senior fellow at Japan's National Institute for Defense Studies, NIDS, and a former top-ranked official at the JMOD, as well as one of Japan's top defense intellectuals, outlines a strategy for deterring precisely this kind of gray zone security challenge, emphasizing that through continuous state intelligence, Surveillance and Reconnaissance, ISR, Information Gathering, Military Exercises, and Demonstrations of Operational Effective and Readiness Japan can prevent the emergence of windows of opportunity, and thus achieve dynamic deterrence, Takahashi 2015, 2, yet, he goes on to warn against local deployments, noting that these frontline forces could be neutralized or destroyed by Chinese A-2 stroke AD capabilities Takahashi 2015. 6. He suggests strengthening allied deterrence via a light frontline presence, based on a strong coast guard, tactical dispersal of assets, and a heavier stand of strike force outside of A-2 stroke AD range. Takahashi 2015. 6. From this dynamic deterrence perspective, the local deployments should consist of Japanese Coast Guard, Naval, and Air Force patrols, supported by U.S. Air Force and Navy. Although the focus in this section has been on an invasion of the Senkaku Diamois, 
the Marines are also linked, often implicitly, to deterrence of an attack on Taiwan. As noted, Japan's official Taiwan policy remains deliberately ambiguous lift 2021, though the understanding is that, for example, Japan would consider an attack on Kadena to be attack on Japan, Mastro 2023. 6. The loss of Taiwan would have devastating effects on Japan's economy and security, potentially leading to China emerging as a regional hegemon, Sachs 2022. Moreover, Taiwan and the Senkakus are not entirely separate issues, given that China's claim is based on the islands belonging to Taiwan province, and given their location close to Taiwan's northeastern coastline, they could be occupied as part of a Taiwan conflict, or as a precursor, Sachs 2022. While a detailed examination of a hypothetical Taiwan conflict is beyond the scope of this article, see Kanshin et al. 2023 for detailed scenarios, much of the preceding discussion, especially in terms of the vulnerability of Fu Tenma, also pertains to a Taiwan contingency. For example, in a recent foreign affairs piece on U.S. deterrence in Asia, Michel Flournoy, a former top-ranked Pentagon official and prominent security studies expert, similarly states that anything within the second island chain, that is Okinawa, is highly vulnerable to Chinese attack and that within the ring, the operating principle should be based on places, not bases 2020, NP. She calls for highly mobile, transient forces, including Marines, moving between austere, temporary bases Flournoy 2020, NP. The aforementioned air and naval bases are obvious targets, and strategists note the U.S. expects huge losses of ships, fighters, and bombers in any conflict. Kanshin et al. 2023. Beyond the missile threat, China poses hybrid warfare challenges to the alliance, which further complicates the contribution of the Marines to deterrence. The latest U.S. Department of Defense China Power Report highlights this hybrid threat, identifying Chinese information operations, I.O., especially cyber warfare capabilities, as a growing influence threat U.S. Defense Department 2022-85, I.O., including space warfare capabilities crucial to A2 stroke AD, are a key plank of China's strategy. Indeed Beijing has a clearly defined grand strategy in cyberspace, maintaining cyber sovereignty at home through intense censorship, close cooperation between the civilian and military realms in technology, and integrated information operations and cyber warfare to achieve cyberspace superiority, including support of A2 stroke AD. So Santo 2020, Beijing is developing capabilities to disrupt military and critical infrastructure systems to shape decision-making and disrupt military operations beginning in the initial stages and throughout a conflict U.S. Defense Department 2022. 8. The report notes that China is also developing AI augmented warfare capabilities including drone swarms, while Japan is also developing cyber capabilities to mitigate the overall threat from China. It has been constrained by the constitutional limitations, Articles 9 and 21, on offensive capabilities and domestic surveillance Glucksmann 2021, a relative laggard, so Santo 2020, it has invested in a JSDF cyber defense unit to improve cybersecurity and technology. And aside from counter-strike capabilities, 2022 also saw a major increase in cyber spending Johnston 2022. Still, Japan lags behind China, ultimately relying on cooperation with the U.S. and sheltering under its security umbrella. The U.S. has a broad spectrum of cyber capabilities. Much as China's I.O. capabilities have been developed with Taiwan in mind, Kitchen 2023, so too is the U.S. drone program obviously China-focused, with local deployment to overcome the adversary's time-distance mass advantage. DARPA in Macmillan 2023, NP. The U.S. has confirmed the existence of a DARPA program to develop the ability to unleash thousands of autonomous land, sea, and air drones capable of overwhelming and dominating an enemy's area defenses. Macmillan 2023, NP. Although drone swarms have their own vulnerabilities, signal jamming, poor weather conditions, etc., they have been identified in simulations by RAND, and the Air Force is decisive in the defense of Taiwan, Trevithick 2022. The point here is not to provide a detailed exposition of cyber, 
drone, or broader hybrid warfare in East Asia. Rather, it is to put the Marines' role in deterrence into context. U.S. naval and marine strategy has shifted towards distributed maritime operations, that is, distributing rather than concentrating forces, making them hard to find and reducing vulnerability. Mosher 2022, an expeditionary advanced base operations, establishing temporary forward-located bases to provide logistics and fire support as well as conducting surveillance and reconnaissance operations. United States Marine Corps 2023. This is a decisive shift away from the older role of the Marines as larger marine expeditionary units, which would engage in self-sustained frontal amphibious assaults. In other words, the U.S. recognizes the vulnerability of the Marines on Okinawa and the declining importance of major air bases in enemy range and is shifting posture. This makes sense, after all, neither U.S. nor Japanese defense intellectuals discuss the Marine base on Okinawa in terms of deterrence, at least in conversations with each other within the field of security studies. As we have seen in most in-depth analyses, if the base is referenced either directly or indirectly, it is in the context of how quickly it would be destroyed in any conflict, aside from the many examples above. See also Secretary of Mastro in Eastern 2017. 4 5, Defense 2019. 62, Beyond the Missile Threat, Cyber Warfare, Drone swarms and other new technologies are considered by both China and the US to be the determinant factors in a conflict. This is not to say that the Marines play no deterrent role. Rather, in the US's own strategic thinking, the old role of the Marines, that is, larger concentrated forces with the capabilities to launch frontal amphibious attacks, whole territory, etc., has been replaced by a pared down vision of smaller more agile units geographically dispersed across the region. Ultimately, the forward deployment of almost 20,000 U.S. Marines concentrated on one small island within range of hundreds of crews and thousands of ballistic missiles is not crucial to either defense or deterrence. 4.4. The Marine Base Relocation's Role in Communicating Credibility We have seen that neither the Marines' capabilities nor their geographic location are crucial to deterrence. But what of the other main point, that relocating the base off of Okinawa, indeed outside of Japan, would undermine the alliance, and thus undermine the credibility of extended deterrence? We turn first to the overall credibility of extended deterrence in the alliance. Of all US allies, Japan is probably the most consistently reassured, and Japan also enjoys about as much credibility as is possible under extended deterrence. Most obviously, under the security treaty the U.S. pledges to defend Japan should it come under attack. Such treaties are viewed as foundational, contractual documents, and failing to fulfill treaty commitments would undermine confidence in the U.S. not only in East Asia but globally, leading to the unraveling of the U.S. Authored Global Security Architecture Anderson et al. 2013, 17, Beyond the Treaty, a key element of credibility is political military support. In the case of Japan, this includes U.S. military sales and of course the large-scale overseas deployment of troops. Such deployments are viewed as highly credible and reliable, and are assumed to represent a tripwire initiating a much larger U.S. response. Sanderson et al. 2013. 17. The Marines are sometimes described by analysts as providing a tripwire effect. Bush 2010. Cottony 2015. Tetsuo Cottony states, that their presence sends a strong signal to countries such as North Korea and China, that an attack on Japan's mainland, Okinawa, or the Senkakus, will immediately involve the United States, Cottony 2010. 2. The preceding analysis interrogated the assumption specifically of immediate U.S. involvement in a senkaku Daiwa clash. Still, taken more broadly, few would dispute that U.S. bases in Japan act as a tripwire. However, as we have seen, U.S. bases are scattered across the country, from Misawa in the north to Kadena and Futenma stroke Hinoko in the south. If the Marines provide a tripwire, then so do the other bases. If the assertion is that the Marines are a tripwire, because they are close to the action in the event of an ECS conflict, then so too is the Kadena Air Base. In fact, we have seen that Kadena is, by the Chinese military's own estimation, one of the very first and most important targets in a conflict. 
While that same report mentions Katina nine times, it does not mention Marines, Futenma, or Hinoko at all. Mastro in Eastern 2017. This suggests that Kadena is the local tripwire, not the Marines. Beyond the tripwire effect, joint exercises, with troops standing shoulder to shoulder, not only increase joint capabilities and interoperability, but are perhaps more important as a demonstration of power and signal of intent, and they are closely observed by all parties in the region Anderson et al. 2013, 21. Japan and the U.S. frequently engage in joint exercises together and with other regional states, including Yama Sakura, Keen Sword, and Exercise Malabar. In 2014 during the biannual Keen Sword exercises, the two states simulated the recapturing of occupied islands off Kyushu, one year after Japanese troops had received training on precisely this scenario from U.S. Marines in California slave in 2014. Subsequent Iron Fist exercises, also in California, have focused on training the ARDB. These joint exercises, alongside the ever-deepening interoperability of the U.S. and Japanese militaries, unquestionably communicate the credibility of extended deterrence, and they do so far more clearly than the strategically vulnerable location of the Marine base. Rather than continue to belabor the point, let us stop and consider the credibility of U.S. extended deterrence and the role of the Marines. The alliance has been the center of U.S.-Asia policy, from the early days of the Cold War to today. Even Trump, whose outspoken criticism of NATO surely undermined extended deterrence in Europe, was relatively moderate in his criticism of Japan. He even confirmed the inclusion of the Senkaku Diawas in the security treaty. His erratic approach to U.S. foreign policy in general opened up broader credibility questions, and sped up the process of decentering the U.S. in Japan's security strategy G in 2018, Midford 2018, Wilkins 2018, O'Shea and Maslow 2020. The impact of Trump and the possibility of a future Trumpian president aside, in terms of the nuts and bolts, it is difficult to imagine what more the U.S. can do to increase credibility in the ECS without further provoking China. As for the Marines, under normal, neutral circumstances, their relocation would have no effect on the credibility of U.S. extended deterrence. However, the relocation is not taking place in neutral circumstances. Various Japanese officials, scholars, and journalists have stated publicly that opposition to and delay of the relocation damages the alliance, and specifically, deterrence. This is despite the fact that, as demonstrated, the value of the Marines in terms of deterrent capabilities, or as a tripwire, is negligible and easily replaced. Opposition to Hinoko has been depicted as a chink in the armor of the alliance that is exploited by China, which allegedly funds the opposition groups and infiltrates them with spies. Mar 2016. In this narrative, opposition to the relocation of the base undermines deterrence. Yet, Joseph Nye described it as a second-order issue which has grown out of proportion to its importance, 2010, NP, an issue that was not relevant to deterrence has somehow become relevant. The subjective, psychological nature of deterrence means that if those with authority, such as politicians, analysts, and journalists, keep stating that it will damage both deterrence and the alliance, then eventually it can damage deterrence and the alliance. There is no small irony in the fact that many of those who bestow deterrent value on the base are now blaming the opponents of the relocation for undermining deterrence. Regardless of the origins of the credibility issue, does this mean that relocation must go ahead, and if it does not, deterrence will be damaged? I return to this question after summarizing the findings of the article. 5. Conclusion This article analyzed the role played by the U.S. Marines on Okinawa in extended deterrence. The relevance of this topic stems from the fact that politicians, officials, analysts, and journalists cite the maintenance of deterrence as the key reason for the highly controversial relocation of MCAS Futenma to Hinoko, rather than to a location off Okinawa. The article found little evidence supporting these claims. In terms of overall capabilities, the Marines' capabilities pale in comparison to those of the 5th Air Force or the Navy's 7th Fleet. As for the local balance of forces, the Marines are unlikely to play a significant role in an ECS conflict especially in the initial stages when proximity could matter. Moreover, in the event of escalation their location leaves them highly vulnerable.
Strikingly, the newly formed Japanese Marines, whose purpose is to recapture islands following a presumed Chinese occupation, are located 700 kilometers away, a location that the JSDF describe as providing deterrent value. In sum, in terms of capabilities, the base could be relocated without significant damage to deterrence. As for credibility, the U.S.-Japan Security Treaty, regular and massive joint exercises, high-level interoperability, and massive U.S. forward deployment in Japan would seem to provide as much credibility as is possible. In terms of tripwires, even though the Marines are located close to the most likely site of conflict, Katina is far more likely to be a target than Futenma stroke Hinoko. Thus, the article found little evidence of deterrent value, with the singular exception of the fact that, since the base has been constantly narrated as having deterrent value, failure to implement the relocation damages the alliance and deterrence, this could become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Estimating this is difficult, and the author does not have access to high-ranking Chinese or North Korean officials to gauge their perception of the relocation controversy. The analysis leaves an important question unanswered. Why push ahead with the base relocation and make the claim that deterrence is at stake? A detailed answer is beyond the scope of this article. And while there are multiple factors involved, part of the answer is that Tokyo plays down Okinawan opposition due to fear of abandonment by the U.S. Envoy 2013. Fear of abandonment has driven Japanese strategic thinking for over 50 years. Fatan 2019 and the Trump administration served to increase the question marks over U.S. commitment to the region Noche and Maslow 2020. Okinawa is geographically and politically remote from Tokyo, and aside from older peace activists, the issue has less resonance on the home islands. Meanwhile, the central government has been skillful in its use of compensation politics, often at the micro level, bypassing the prefectural government and making direct payments to landowners and others affected by the bases, a practice that continues to this day. His Ian and Pure 2023. In other words, Tokyo exploits the relative poverty and structural dependency of the region itself a legacy of colonization, destruction, and militarization. O'Shea 2019b, with targeted compensation in order to maintain the marine bases under dubious pretenses. This practice has succeeded in, for now at least, stabilizing base politics in Okinawa, his IAN and PR 2023, though it also invigorates the anti-base movement and raises serious moral questions. It could also lead to severe long-term consequences for the alliance. Okinawa has over the past two decades emerged once more as a strategically crucial location in East Asia. O'Shea 2019b. Most of the population is against the relocation and the issue dominates Naha-Tokyo relations. Okinawa has suffered over a century of second-class treatment by Tokyo, and the relocation plan is clearly iniquitous. Beyond the morality of the relocation, or of Okinawa's base burden issue more broadly. The relocation does not even make sound strategic sense. Policymakers in Tokyo and Washington ought to be concerned about the long-term sustainability of other deployments on Okinawa. Relocating the base off Okinawa would do much to soothe public opinion and reduce anti-base sentiment, as well as restore the credibility lost by advancing the unsubstantiated deterrence claims examined in this article. Furthermore, by framing the decision to relocate off Okinawa as part of a long-term plan to ensure the sustainability of the bases and resiliency of the long-term presence of the U.S., such a relocation could in fact contribute to credibility, and ultimately to deterrence. Conversely, continuing with the Hinoko relocation will not only perpetuate the unjust treatment of Okinawa and its residents, but it will undoubtedly cause long-term damage to both Okinawa-Japan and Okinawa-U.S. relations potentially undermine the long-term resiliency of the U.S.-Japan alliance.